<laughs> it's twisting it though. <laughs> I got shit to do today, man. <laughs> Just driving with the tire inflator going. What's going on, dude? What are we doing today? We're grabbing one of your favorite toys. The one that you've been wanting to see. This is one of my favorite toys. This is the, uh, what is this, Mike? A K20 jet boat? This is a Honda powered jet boat. That's what it is. It's an all aluminum jet boat. Let me know when you're good. There he goes, folks. Bam. It's like Christmas morning in spring, pulling out the boat from its winter hibernation. The K Series jet boat. Yeah, it's been it's been lacking some rocks. It loves loves finding rocks. It's what it's good at, as you can tell from the side of it likes going where no man should go. People on canoes and kayaks are really not too happy when you end up coming where Fire. they are. Because they, they don't want motorized vehicles where they go. It's like, yeah, but you see, the way this thing's set up, it really likes small bodies of water. Dude, looks mint, no mice. another sick thing this is my all custom aluminum jet boat that is powered by a honda k-series motor with a turbo slapped on it um, if you can't already tell by now i have a marketplace addiction um, it's just one of those things that spirals out and out of control your buddies send you stuff i always as being a welder fitter fabricator um, i feel matt when you see these things, majority of dudes who are on the same deranged mindset that I am, they're like, I need that in my life. Like, who doesn't want an aluminum jet boat that can hit rocks and run in like four inches of water? It just seems very appealing to me. It seems right up my alley. So my best buddy Kyle sent me this two summers ago and instantly I messaged the guy and I was like, I need this in my life. Um, just because of all the things into it. I always wanted to build one myself, but it's a fairly large undertaking by the time you get all the materials, spend all the time into it. This was made by a guy named Andy, who's good buddies with my man Jeff out in Woodstock. So I drove out to Woodstock, hung out with him for the day. We went on the Woodstock Creek. He kind of showed me all the little features that he did to it, gave me the ins and outs of the boat, hung out with Jeff for a bit, and then I took it on on my way home. Did the first test rips with it and instantly there was a lot of stuff that was not working good as it is with it and andy had already told me about these things this is stuff that i knew the ecu that it runs on is a honda k pro so it's a fully programmable standalone ecu boats are way different than cars in, tune, in terms of the tuning tables what the what the vessel <laughs> i was gonna say vehicle in terms of what the vessel is going through the load that the jet pump is taking from the motor and the cells that you work in and it was a little out of andy's uh territory he was more of a welder fitter fabricator i'm a welder fitter fabricator but i also play with a lot of electronics i like wiring i like figuring out how stuff works so that's all this was to me it's just another thing that kind of got me down this deep rabbit hole and then i said not last summer i got this two summers ago and i was just like tunnel vision jet boat every single weekend i was out on the jet boat me and my girlfriend ripping around i'm just breaking stuff constantly i'll make the sticky note thing again to add stuff i got a couple videos of the process of me breaking it and then upgrading and fabricating it when i got it matt will go to the engine bay and go over some stuff but it had a huge whole set like hx40 turbo on it like this massive turbo 
a uh, little overkill for the boost that it's running and the application and where you want the power man on this thing. You want this thing to be up and out of the water instantly. We want that low end power. The first rips with it that I did with it, I was just literally uh, data logging it. So I had my laptop with me, girlfriend holding the laptop. I was doing pulls. Uh, I got a creek 15, 20 minutes from my house here. We're gonna go there eventually and show you guys where we drop it in. And that's where I can do a lot of test and tuning because my buddy lives there. It's easy, if I break down, another guy with a boat can come save me. Boats are different. Cars, I break cars all the time, stuck on the side of the road, whatever. Boats, when you break it, you're stuck in the water. So it's a little bit of a different ordeal to get you out of the water and water moves so you start moving <laughs> so it's not the most fun thing we've definitely been stranded a couple times learning stuff with it uh, almost sank at one time you get that uh, it's just a, a learning curve and that's what I like I just like learning learning stuff and playing with things and constantly evolving it so again in general we got a handmade aluminum jet boat Andy bought the plans online. He works at a shop that forms and fits metal. So him and his buddy made this at their shop, bought the cheapest motor that they could get, built their whole water pump housing because you have a water pump that sucks the water up into the engine, pumps, pumps all the coolant lake water now through the engine and all the accessories. And then it's thrusted out the back through the impeller propeller. And that's where you get that cool jet ski because that's pretty much what this is it is a jet ski drivetrain out of like a 2000 sea do with a lot of custom pieces to make the honda motor fit on it we even got bmw parts in this thing to make it work we got a bmw drive shaft guibo to connect to the flex plate there's a bunch of cool stuff so i'll talk a lot more about that when we actually get in the engine bay as for the exterior it's a really tiny boat. It's about 10 feet long. We got a small swim deck on the back with a stomp grate so I can chew up all the seaweed that we suck up into it. Matt can kind of sneak underneath it. We have a full 3 8 sheet of UHM. It's a UHWM, whatever, man. People are gonna chew, I don't care. It's really thick plastic. And uh, it's, a, it's pretty much my, my skid plate for rocks. You can see the side hits a lot of rocks and you pretty much just see an area where you think you can fit and you're just like, we're going for it. And you just get smashed around and you make it up. It's, it's really stupid and fun. It's a great time. We'll come around the back and then Matt can kind of see the impeller drive. Here we have the full sea do drive train. This is what bolts onto the back of the boat. Um, this is the only real sea do part that's kind of part of this boat. This is your reverse bucket. So I have a cable up there I can show you that pulls it down. So as soon as this engine is running, you're pushing water. So that's the difference when it, it's, it's directly connected to the impeller. When you look in the back of the engine bay, Matt can go that side, I'll come this side. You look down past the turbocharger, you can see we have the, the flex plate of the motor onto a custom machined adapter that Andy made to a BMW, we call them Guibo. So this is a rubber like it uh, takes a lot of dampening forces out of the drivetrain, so then it's gonna be a lot, this thing makes a little bit more than the CD, like torque, like the factory motor was like a two stroke that revs to 8,000, 9,000 RPM. This is a uh, 250 horsepower, probably 200 foot pounds of torque, four cylinder that only revs to like 58, six grand is kind of what I have the limiter set to. So as soon as you turn this engine on, it's driving the impeller, the impeller is spinning, you are moving forward. It's just how it works. <laughs> it's constantly attached to your drivetrain all the time and it's just one big consistent load all the way through. In terms of the engine setup, it is a $800 Honda Element K20. Uh, we have a Lunk 2, it's a fake Skunk 2 aftermarket intake manifold on it because uh, again, I'll send you more pictures of it. When I got this thing, I was just constantly developing it. So Andy made this really cool intake manifold for it that fit the factory throttle body that he actually put water jackets in it. So it's using the lake water to cool the intake. But it, that was one of the major things that was making this thing not run because Hondas are, they like air, man. They just move air in and out. That's all engines are. So as soon as I put this aftermarket intake manifold, it changed my tuning curve and it pretty much instantly changed all of the problems that I was having with it to try and get a smooth, consistent drivability, which was always the issue with it. Uh, could never get it at a good constant RPM and staying at it and overheating. It was having a lot of issues. So we just remedied all of it. We put a whole new intake manifold on it. I took a water to air intercooler out of a newer Sea-Doo. 
Uh, the C2 two three seaters, they have a supercharged three cylinder in them. They make like 250 horsepower, they're really quick. They come with a factory water to air intercooler. So I bought one of those used on Marketplace, welded some cast fittings to it, and then I adapted the intercooler piping into that. Because before it was just intercooler piping, like intercooler, sorry, turbo turbocharger right into the intake manifold. So now we have a water to air intercooler that's using the lake water to cool the intake air that's coming into the motor. This is an intake air temperature sensor. So I'm measuring these things when I'm data logging. I have never seen intake air temperatures match the coolant temperatures. So I was like, all right, we got a problem. We got 100 and 190 degrees intake air temp. That's not going to do. So as soon as I did this modification, now it's even when I'm fully wicked up on it, hitting like six grand when it hits the limiter, uh, I, ne I rarely see over 100, 112 now. So I fixed the intake air temperature problem. We fixed the airflow problem. The only real issues that it has now, uh, it's just making everything more reliable compared to what it was when I first got it. And that's been the whole thing. And this, these types of vessels need to be owned by someone who's willing to make custom stuff and constantly adapt and evolve. Uh, we got a sweet valve cover that my main man, Rain, the welder at FDF, he's a big Honda guy, so he loves this boat. So he custom spec'd this valve cover for me, put a nice FDF logo in it. We got my little, little you're probably wondering what's in that little container. This is where we just keep all of our essentials when we're on our boat. My boat tool bag isn't in here because I stole it. Same with the wastegate, I stole that from my Subaru. But we got a bunch of extra lines, fittings, clamps, hose clamps, we got some oil, we got the fittings to, so we can run water through it if we just want to run it out of the water. Uh, last time I used it, I poked a hole in this fitting here, down here, because ever since I added in the external wastegate, because I changed the turbocharger, because obviously the turbocharger died, so I Amazon a nice max peating rods. Uh, next day delivery, like $205 turbo, bolted it onto the manifold, and I just made some adjustments to make everything fit, welded the wastegate back on, uh, onto this exhaust manifold, like the turbo housing, I put the wastegate right onto it, so this is my now boost control out. So we gotta fix that, it's kinda why it's back inside. I gotta pick away on it this weekend and get it ready for the water, fix that coupler, probably just weld that pipe close to that, and that, then that should hopefully get that, uh, that problem we're getting with the heat. It's the heat from the wastegate going into the tube. It's superheating the, the pipe, so it's blowing out the coupler. So I either gotta get some more OEM Sea-Doo couplers, because they're a lot higher rated. Right now, I just, I'm pretty sure that's a vibrant coupler. Not rated for exhaust flow. <laughs> this is an OEM Sea-Doo one. This one is rated for exhaust flow. This is like an intercooler coupler that I had lying around that fits, but. Uh, it's not rated for exhaust. It's different because this is water jacketed. So this line actually has coolant going through the downpipe. Like this is multi-layered. There's actually coolant flowing through the outside of this. At the bottom of this piece, it's spitting it out now to cool that pipe and uh, working its way out the back because the exhaust runs underwater. If you look at the back of the vessel, this is the exhaust port. So the exhaust is traditionally under the water. Like when, when I'm chilling in the boat, like it's kind of like, right up there, chilling, chilling right around here. You can hear when the waves go in and out, it's like rawr, rawr, rawr. And uh, obviously when you get on it, all you hear is just like <laughs> Makes really cool turbo sounds. This is a stomp grate. It's really hard to kind of see all the other pieces, but if you sneak under the back here, we got our little tail fin that just helps for the por 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 porpoising, porpoising effect. Um, these really help with cornering, having a straighter edge on the side. Uh, Andy did a really good job of getting a good design. There's a lot of different designs of these boats, but once you start joining the Jet John forums on Facebook and you get deep into the rabbit hole, uh, there's a lot of really good information <laughs> on it, man. And you gotta get right under to see the stomp crate, Matt. You gotta go like right under there. That's a trick piece, because you ride in such low water and you get lily pads and you get seaweed and stuff. That physically, that's your air intake. So that always needs to be in the water. That's what's sucking the water up into the boat because your engine is spinning this propeller. It's creating the suction from underneath the boat. So if you don't have a grate on it, you're gonna start pulling in rocks, sticks, a bunch of junk and it clogs your, it breaks your impeller. They're, they're not very uh, strong. And this is very custom spec impeller by Andy. He's made it all larger for the displacement of motor that we have just to try and make it work pretty decent. But it's not a fast boat, it's just a cool boat. This thing would be way better with like a sea Dew Spark drivetrain. If you just took like a uh, drivetrain from a sea Dew Spark and I plunked it in here and I put the sea Dew Spark drive on, this thing would be a ripper. 
it would go super fast. But yeah, other than that, that's- Talk about the interior really quick. Yeah, right? that's it for like the drivetrain engine. Interior is basic. It's just the bench seat that Andy made. We got the classic bat wing wheel. This is the throttle. It's just the pull finger throttle. Go around the other side, Matt. You might actually be able to see it a lot easier. We're up in the engine bay here. We got all party lights on, switch panel on the one side, uh, my little dash cluster. Doesn't work anymore. It's just a cheap Amazon one. I usually just use my phone on this nice little RAM mount anyways. I have my Honda app. So that has all my information that I really need. And I have the GPS on my phone. So that's all I really need. We got some cup holders. Uh, it's really simple. I think I went over the reverse bucket. That's how I sneak in the reverse and you go around back. You can see the buckets down now. That's gonna help propel it backwards. Go forward now, good to go. And Hit yeah. the throttle really quick. Or just... Oh, that's not the throttle. Wah, wah. That's on the finger throttle up here. And this is how you turn. It's really, really simple. You can see the bucket moving side to side at the back. It's a really simple setup. It is. They're really simple. There's just a lot of work into putting them together. So again, I'm a marketplace bandit. Can't put up, can't say no to a deal when I go to get rid of this. I'm gonna make money off of it, 100%. Uh, these things, just like everything, materials have gone up, labor's gone up, so it costs a lot to kind of make these boats. It has always costed a lot, so I'm happy I got it off of handy when I did, and I'm enjoying my time with it, playing with it, learning a lot with it. That's my biggest thing. I've learned a lot about mechanics and boats and just having fun with these motors. I've always loved Honda engines, so it's fun to have it, and it's just cool. Like blows people's mind when you pull up to the sandbar and kids love it, old people love it, canoers and kayakers don't really love it, but it's uh, most people can't appreciate it and I just like dabbling with it. So we'll get it ready for this nice spring coming up. Got to redo the wastegate tube, steal that one off the Subaru, make a new one for the Subaru. I'll probably do that tonight. That's probably what I'll do when Matt goes head home tonight, edit some videos. But shy of that, get her ready to rip, put some fresh premium in it. The water table is high right now, so it's a good time to go out and have some fun with it. You can go down places you can't normally get down to. Uh, lily pads and all that junk hasn't really come up yet. Um, so it's good. It lets you be able to get to more places. So we'll definitely have a video of us dropping this in the river and doing some rips on it, having some fun. It's only really a two seater, so. <laughs> That's all you can really do. Um, but yeah, other than that, guys, thanks for hanging out. Any questions about the boat, let me know. Um, always happy to help. Again, I've learned a lot doing this. I got a lot of photos and videos that I'll kind of post in there. Give to Matt and he can do like a slideshow if, at the end if he wants of the variation, like how it got when I'm talking about the intercooler setup and the intake manifold, you can see all that stuff. So again, any questions, let me know. Like, comment, subscribe. Uh, we'll be making some turbo spooling on the next one for you guys. Mm -hmm.